Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. When I was traveling from Manila, coming here to Australia, I bought a copy of a pocket book that I could read in the plane. And it was Dan Brown's novel entitled Inferno. Actually, uh, when this uh, book first hit the bookshops, the Philippines went crazy about a small part of the novel which referred to Manila as the gate of hell. <laughs> Having read the book now, it occurred to me that what the novel said about Manila was true. It was the most densely populated city on earth with huge traffic jams, suffocating pollution, houses made of corrugated metals and cardboards, communities reeking of stench, and horrifying sex trade and trafficking of women, girls, and children. I was reminded of Dan Brown's novel because despite the inferno that is Manila now, our government is talking about a paradise that will be built in the Philippines during this Asian century. Let me first talk about this Asian century. First, from the point of view of the imperialist powers, especially the United States, Asia Pacific is now a key economic growth area at this stage. The tentacles of US economic power has long been weakened in Europe with the formation of the EU. In the Middle East, the US is finding difficulty to keep its hold in an area that has been unstable for quite some time. In Latin America, as we all know, a number of countries have resisted the US economic and political stranglehold and are banding together to raise the banner of socialism anew. So that's why Asia Pacific is now what we're looking at, or the US is looking at. Secondly, in the region of the Association of the Southeast Asian Nations, or the ASEAN, the Asian century is being marked by talks about the integration of the economies of the 10 ASEAN countries. The integration is aimed at integrating the economies of the ASEAN countries into the global neoliberal capitalist economy. Since the ASEAN six, and that's the uh, older ASEAN members, composed of Singapore, Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei, have long been under the global capitalist economy, the integration is focused at the so-called transitional economies of the newer member states, uh, consisting of the countries of Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam, or the CLMB, as they are referred to. The integration is not even an attempt to regionalize the economies of the ASEAN countries in the model of the European Union. It is a schema whereby the ASEAN will be developed as a production base for the needs of the global capitalist market, especially for the imperialist powers and the big industrialized nations. Even in terms of economic benefits for the ASEAN region, whatever industrialization that will come out of the integration will be too minimal, too limited, and will mainly serve the big imperialist powers and big corporations. This will also lead to capital searching for the lowest labor cost in the region. Hence, the industrialization will be at the expense of the working classes in the region. Thirdly, the Asian century is to be pursued under the United States attempt to militarize and police the region under its pivot and rebalancing plan, which will position 60% of US warships from anywhere in the world to patrol Asia. It also means construction of new US bases in Japan, South Korea, and Guam, and the deployment of increasing number of rotational troops and war materials also here in Australia and in the Philippines. This year alone, the United States is deploying 1,150 troops in Australia, which is expected to increase by 2,500 by 2016. 
So welcome to the Asian century. <laughs> According to Dante's Inferno, there are nine gates to hell. In ASEAN, we have 10 countries, <laughs> with almost each one exhibiting some sort of Dante's Inferno. Thailand is now in hell under the rule of the military. The Philippines is now in hell under the widespread corruption of the entire government. Malaysia is now in hell, not only because it is missing the MH370 plane, but because it is also under a dynastic rule which is constraining democracy in that country. Indonesia has long been a hell for the Indonesian sweatshop workers and the Indonesian poor. And lastly, in this, in this Asian century, let us be prepared for the worsening environmental disaster that will make our region even a more hellish one. According to the recent study of the Asian Development Bank, the region, especially China and East Asia, are already consuming today roughly a third of global energy. This is set to rise to over half by 2013. With Asia being a home to two-thirds of the world's poor, and with many of its mega cities already mired in polluted air and water, where do you think this would lead us into? We have already experienced hell in a series of mega typhoons never seen before in the Philippines, such as the Haiyan or the Yolanda typhoon, which killed 10,000 people in an instant in Tacloban Leyte in November last year. You here have already experienced climate horrors and boost fires without equal in last few years. I dread what is going to happen under this Asian century. And with ASEAN integration going full blast next year, the Philippines is expected to suffer once again in the collapse of its agriculture, garments and textile, automobile assemblies, and other industries. Even as we speak of the hell that they are going to submit us in the ASEAN countries once again in this century, I am also aware that this situation is being duplicated here in Australia, like the budget cuts under the Tony Abbott's neoliberal government, which cut into the hearts and bodies of the youth, the students, and the working class people who are made to suffer like the tortured souls fed to the dogs in the seventh circle of hell. The only recourse left for the youth and the working classes is to prepare against the disaster but not in terms of merely engaging the capitalist institutions that are pushing for the integration, not in terms of negotiating for safety nets with the so-called tripartite bodies, just like what the NGOs are doing. But let us prepare for widespread and crippling mass actions that will protest the massive closures of companies and industries in the years to come. This, of course, means that we have to build the broadest coalition that could take on the disasters to be brought about by the ASEAN integration in the Asian century. This is a coalition that will have to mobilize against the effects of the integration and that will have to put forward an anti-neoliberal alternative to the present neoliberal and imperialist schema. I'm glad to say that there has been some positive developments in trade union unity in our country in the past three years. A broad trade union formation from the traditional to left union centers have been formed. It is called Nagkaisa, unity in English, and it's been campaigning for a number of union demands since then. This May Day alone, Nagkaisa held the biggest workers' rally in the Philippines ever since the year 2000. We need a left strategy that also builds on the solidarity among the left groups and the working class, classes especially in the region. The left should counter the climate of competition nurtured by the ASEAN integration in the Asian century by pursuing solidarity linkages and solidarity actions across the region. For this, we are preparing for an Asian left conference in Manila in November this year to discuss the problems related with the ASEAN integration, 
the TPP, the Asian Century, and the preparation and the strategies that need to be done. Everyone is invited to come. Uh, <laughs> we'll just uh, uh, see whether uh, we can have a, 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 a bigger, bigger uh, uh, attendance. Uh, given the, the uh, budget that uh, we have. But in the horizon right now, we see two types of regional integration happening in the world today. One is the integration such as what we have discussed, that's the ASEAN, such as the ASEAN one, which serves the transnational corporations and the imperialist powers. While pre we prepare for the hell, that is the ASEAN integration in the global capitalist economy, we also dream of paradise. And our idea of paradise is for each country to work for the welfare of its people and not for a few corporations or the multi-billionaires and the elite. And this points to an anti-neoliberal, anti-capitalist regional integration that is happening today in Latin America, led by the socialist leaderships of Venezuela, Bolivia, Ecuador, and Cuba. This is the integration like the Alternativa Bolivariana para las Americas or the ALBA in Latin America, which serves as a counterweight to the anti-people, pro-corporate agenda of ASEAN integration. This is the kind of Asian integration that we should fight for. It is utopian to think, however, that the ASEAN countries could be pressured right now to follow a similar path as ALBA. The ASEAN needs to be dismantled first, which means the bourgeois regimes in the ASEAN countries should be overthrown first so the government of the masses in the Philippines and other ASEAN countries could be established to be able to set up an ALBA type of socialist integration. Dante traversed his own inferno to reach paradise. Perhaps we need to go through hell to attain liberation. Dante was guided by Virgil and his muse to see the road to paradise. We have our own muse in the socialist integration, in the socialism of the 21st century, and this will be our guide to see us through. Dare to struggle, dare to win. Long live the unity of socialists everywhere. Mabuhay tayong lahat. <laughs>